The Wizards, Knicks, and Cavs have huge underrated off seasons. Every one of them has a lottery pick in the draft. They all have a huge roster decision to make. Will Bradley Beal sign his max extension or leave in free agency? Will the Cavs keep Colin Sexton or trade him? Can the Knicks finally get that star they're looking for? First, the offseason basics. Can you believe none of these teams are any good, but they don't have cap space? That is sad. They do have the full $10.3 million mid-level. Cavs and Knicks with that biannual exception. Their needs, well, the Knicks and the Wizards need a point guard, and the Cavs do too, just off the bench. Draft picks on the lottery. Wizards at 10, Knicks at 11, Cavs at 14. Some really interesting free agents. The Wizards, Bradley Beal, Thomas Bryant, the Cavs, Colin Sexton, and the Knicks, Mitchell Robinson. How did they do last year? Well, the Wizards and Cavaliers actually did better than expected despite missing the playoffs. The Knicks were a lot worse after they made the playoffs last season. Before we get to these off-season decisions, you need to join the AM Hoops Patreon or the AM Hoops YouTube membership. You get to join the AM Hoops Discord. I'm a part of it and a whole bunch of awesome guys and girls. And I get a little bit more money, which goes toward my life goal of owning a super yacht and it turns out that these super yachts cost almost a half a billion dollars i'm projected to make my goal in the year about 2075 and with inflation i think it'll probably be a billion dollars so you joining the patreon really helps the biggest decision for these teams is what bradley beal does he can opt out and just be an unrestricted free agent that is huge. I mean, we're hearing all about Zach Levine. What about Bradley Beal? But first, Colin Sexton's future. He is a restricted free agent. Before his injury, dude was a beast. Career highs in points, field goal percentage. Now he can get a max contract, but obviously they're not gonna pay him that. Any other team then can swoop in, overpay, and steal him. Cleveland had huge success without Colin Sexton this year. Does he even fit? Now, some people point to these numbers. Garland with Sexton, horrible. Minus 6.3 net rating this year before his injury. With Isaac Okoro, plus 6.6. But look at the possessions. Okoro got to play with Jared Allen and Evan Mobley once they broke out. This is not a fair comparison. Now, we can agree Sexton is not a perfect fit. With Sexton, you get scoring and pretty bad defense. He wants 19 to 22 million a year. The Cavs want to give him 15 to 18. So option number one is to re-sign him to an agreed amount. If not, option two, sign and trade him. Three, let him go to a team who's going to overpay. Or four, sign the qualifying offer, which isn't going to happen. Now we'll wait and see what does happen in July, but watch the Pistons and Pacers. They have enough money to overpay, but I think Cleveland would be stupid to let him go for nothing. Next is the Knicks pursuit of Jalen Brunson. Playing starters minutes in the playoffs, he dropped 22 points a game on good efficiency. He's not an elite three point shooter or defender, but he is a playoff performer, which is priceless. Now, if the Mavs really want him, they can offer more money, but the Knicks could offer a bigger role in their offense and his dad. New York just hired Rick Brunson as assistant coach. Now with no cap space, there's only two ways to actually get him. Number one, clear space. The Pistons get Kimball Walker, Alec Burks, and a 2023 first from the Mavs, by the way. The Knicks get the 46th pick. Detroit would take Kimba and Burks into their space for a first. And the Knicks clear enough space to pay Brunson 20 million a year. But option number two is a sign and trade. The Mavs get Norland Noel and Cam Reddish. The Knicks get Jalen Brunson. Now this lands the Mavs that rim protector they really need. Dallas would have to agree to play ball here, but at least they don't lose Brunson for nothing. Now before we get to Bradley Beal, there are under the radar moves you have to know for the Cavs and the Knicks. For New York, RJ Barrett is extension eligible. He is not a superstar, but I think he's gonna want huge money. Do not be surprised if they can't get a deal done and he's restricted next year. Julius Randle could get traded for the right deal. He only makes 24 million a year. That's less than Al Horf. And Mitchell Robinson is a free agent. If somebody needs a young rim protector, he could leave. I'm looking at the Raptors if they can't land Rudy Gobert or Mo Bamba. For Cleveland, Darius Garland could get the max. But look at this tweet. Garland tells Rich Paul to take less than the max to have money for Sexton Levert and Ricky Rubio. If that is true, the Cavs have a dude who is really all about winning. And I love Darius Garland even more. 
But that's the exact opposite of Bradley Beal. If he opts out, he could get $248 million for five years. Or he could sign with another team for four years, 184. That's the difference of 64 million. How badly does he want to win? If he really wants a trade, I think DC would honor that. So the Blazers get Bradley Beal on a sign and trade. The Wizards get Anthony Simons on a sign and trade. Eric Bledsoe and Keon Johnson to make the money work. This would be like the Warriors getting D'Lo back when they had to trade Kevin Durant. Reports say that Portland will push hard for Beal and Zach Levine, but Beal could choose almost any team he wants. And that's not what he told Draymond Green. That is priority number one, taking care of yourself. Making sure that you get every dollar that you possibly can make and that you feel comfortable with doing. But there also comes with when you make that money, you want to win ball games. You want to be able to play for Facts. something. Right. right. I want to play in meaningful games. Right. I want to be playing mm -hmm. in late June. Into June. Okay, that's fine. But did you hear what he said at the beginning? Priority number one is to take care of yourself. He is going to sign the max. He's going to get huge money. And when the Chris out for Zingas thing doesn't work out, then he'll demand a trade. But all three of these teams can make a big addition in free agency. Remember, the Knicks and Wizards need a starting point guard, so they should target Tyus Jones. He led the league in assist to turnover ratio four years in a row, an underrated playmaker, and he would be the perfect addition to both rosters. The Cavs should just re-sign Ricky Rubio. He was perfect backing up Darius Garland, and I really love to see him and Kevin Love off the bench, like going back to their Timberwolves days as starters. And when Rubio got injured, that really set them back. The draft though is really exciting because all of these teams have a lottery pick. And at 10, the Wizards take guard Johnny Davis. DC was 25th defensively last year, so they get a versatile defender who pairs well with Bradley Beal when he resigns. Beal shoots threes and handles the ball. Davis is a mid-range guy who can score without the rock if need be. Also, he's super young, so he's a guy to build with when Beal demands a trade. At 11, the Knicks get wing Benedict Matherin. He is a really good three-point shooter and the Knicks offense was awful. They need a playmaker, yes, but that's gonna have to wait for free agency because Matherin is projected as a top 10 pick. If he falls to 11, they get a wing next to RJ Barrett who contributes immediately. And at the end of the lottery, the Cavaliers take guard Dyson Daniels. The Cavs are at their best when Ricky Rubio is healthy. I think they need to re-sign Rubio, but let's face it, he's getting old. They need another playmaker next to Garland. Daniels is six foot six with lockdown D. Some people compare his passing to Josh Giddy. I think this pick is actually the perfect blend of both need and best fit. Those three picks, just full transparency, were almost completely stolen from my mock draft. If you want to see the rest of the mock draft, you have just enough time to get it in because the draft is on June 23rd. So check the draft out right here.